Hello, everybody. Wine with Jimmy here. Thank you for clicking by. My channel is all about wine education, designed to help those of you studying the world of wine. And this video is absolutely no exception to that rule. This video is focusing here on the WSET level three. Uh, and this is a video looking at the questions around wine making that one may find in your examination. So this is uh, part one of two. So this will be a sample question to give you an idea of what you would find on my e-learning portal and potentially what you could find in your examination. So this is available as free content. Part two, where I go into more and more questions to give you even more experience and confidence in answering questions. That is only available on my e-learning portal over at www.winewithjimmy.com. If you do sign up, you'll find loads of extra goodies. You'll see in the green box on the right hand side there. Over 100 hours of video content with me as your tutor, about a 1,000 flashcards, 600 multiple choice questions, a library of short answer questions. You'll get an online community forum, audio format for those of you who are on the go, driving, on public transport, in the gym, and so on. There's also availability of maps and exercises too to help you with your studies. So lots of reasons to sign up. So we're going to talk about some winemaking aspects. And then we're going to talk about really uh, some questions that could be posed around winemaking and then how you should formulate your answers. Now, please remember that in your examination, you will get uh, four short written questions. Winemaking and grape growing will form a part of those questions through one, two, three, and four. So this will not often be a whole question on winemaking, but it will form a part of your uh, questions in your examination. So we are preparing a wine for market, post-fermentation, and maturation. So we uh, have fermented the wine, we have matured it, now we are preparing it for its market. So basically, we are preparing it up to bottling. Please explain the steps of clarification that you would consider to produce a clear wine. OK, there are many things that a winemaker can do here. He or she can actually adopt uh, different processes to make clarity, clear wine. You'll see we've got nine marks available here. So basically, you will get one mark for each of the clarification here. So there's three to announce, three. Uh, and we are going to then talk about the descriptions. You see there are three box boxes. So please give me three. So if you want to uh, do this yourself at home, it's a good idea now to pause, answer as best as you can. And then I'll go through these in a moment. OK, let's look at the type of clarification to begin with. First up is sedimentation. Sedimentation. So this is really where we leave the wine to do its own thing and it will sediment out. Now, if you are a little bit clued up on something like geology, you'll understand that sedimentation is the depositing of sediment over longer periods of time. Now in geology, it's for millions and millions of years. But here we don't have millions of years. So how is that adopted in terms of winemaking? Well, here you are. Here's the description. So one mark for sedimentation and then two marks for this. This relies on gravity over longer periods of time to pull suspended particles down to the bottom of the vessel. So we leave the wine in a vessel and it has some sediment, it will have some maybe heavy and fine sediment, so some gross sediment and some fine sediment. And over time, that sediment will fall towards the bottom of the vat. The wine is then racked, and the definition of racked is moving a wine to another vessel, often to separate the solids from the wine. 
So as all that sediment falls to the bottom, you move the clearer wine away from that fat and you just leave the heavier deposits at the bottom. Then that will be discarded, uh, the, ve the vessel will be cleaned and you will move it back in typically, okay? So you have a clearer product through sedimentation. Now this methodology is actually very useful for wines classified as vegan or vegetarian because they do not employ any animal or animal related product in the production of the wine. So what is the next type of clarification? So this is what we call fining. So this is the addition of a fining agent. Now in the level three, it doesn't go into any more detail about the specific fining agent, but there are many available, including albumum, which is the coagulant found in egg white. So we buy this in industry and utilize this to fine our wine. It just says in your text though, and you'll be fine to write this, the addition of a fining agent bonding the sediment together, which will either settle at the bottom of the vessel and the wine can then be racked or it could be filtered out. Okay, now some of you might like a little anecdote to, in order to understand this. I gave you the geology anecdote for the first one. This one is actually the old method for fining is uh, separating egg white from egg yolk and utilizing only the egg white. So six eggs, six egg whites, beat them together and add them into the bunghole at the top of a barrel. That will then sit in the wine, moving down and fining all the sediment to the bottom, and you move that wine out of that vessel. That creates a clearer product. What about number three for clarification? This is filtration, okay? This is the process of passing a wine through a filter. Uh, examples given in your syllabus for level three is a depth filter, which is basically a series of filters of different types of material. It could be things like uh, sheet filters, clay filters, there are a number of these, or a surface filter, which is more like kind of like a giant sieve. Now, both of these will remove the settlement, okay? It's a form of filtration. This prepares a wine uh, for clarity. That gives you your three types of clarification and the three descriptions, okay? So that's for nine marks. I hope that does make sense. Okay, so let's now talk about the next part of this question, linking into what we were just discussing. Winemakers will choose not to use some of these processes. So the processes we've just gone through explain a disadvantage of each process. Now, you won't get a mark for saying the clarification again. The marks here are only six marks available. So that's two marks for each disadvantage to a winemaker. So why would you not use this process? First of all, let's discuss the one we talked about at the beginning. So sedimentation. Remember my geology anecdote. So sedimentation, first up. So why would we not choose this? Well, this is a longer and slow process, which means the wine will often need to be released later, taking up storage space and delaying income. Okay, so as you probably are aware, most wine is made in the autumn and then wine is released in spring, very early spring. But if you want a really clear product naturally through sedimentation, it's going to take longer to go through that sedimentation process. So this could be where you're tying up too much space. You might need the other vessels, for example, for blending or whatever. Uh, and it means you are, of course, not releasing to market that early, which means you are delaying income. So that's a negative of sedimentation. The second clarification process we discussed was fining. Now, with fining, with adding something to your wine to take away some of the sediments or all of the sediments, some winemakers believe that fining can adversely affect the flavor and texture. 
So it's possible that by doing this process, in some people's opinions, you can make the wine less complex and take away more body. Uh, so it's an issue, certainly for some. There are some really big protagonists for this. Uh, and the next process, actually, as well, you may hear people like Michel Chaputier announced that fining is a very negative process for the finishing and stabilization of wine because it takes away character. And it's actually repeated here for filtration. Some winemakers again believe that filtration, this should write, sorry, here, filtration can adversely affect flavor and texture. Now, quite clearly, you have seen that I just copy and pasted that and I should have changed it to filtration. So please make sure that you do on yours. Hopefully with my mistake, you will remember. Uh, so yes, this is something that as a winemaker myself is very much noticeable. We have done filtration trials just to see what it does and passing wine through filtering sheets which have different levels of pores, pore sizes, so space that particles can go through. The smaller will mean that the more particles it takes out and in fact it does take out a lot of things like colour and like uh, aroma and flavour and density or body. So you really have to think long and hard and do lots of trials about the type of filtration you are doing because it is a common process, certainly for more commercial wines. Now, points two and three, that is fining and filtration, will certainly be done for commercial wines that go to market quite quickly because uh, it is a process which is much speedier than sedimentation, just to give you the uh, little point of difference to sedimentation. Okay, well that brings me to the conclusion of the sample question. If you like to experience more of these types of questions for winemaking, please do go to part two for further questions. Part two is only available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. It's just uh, one example of many extra content you can get by signing up. And you'll see on the right hand side again, all of those wonderful added benefits that you will get. And not to mention, of course, the e-learning platform is ad free, uh, which is the huge difference in comparison to free videos on YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed these. Once again, if you have any comments or questions, please do get in touch by commenting or posing your question below this video. But until next time, I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now.